Hey everybody, Madison here with Health by Ratio. My team and I, consisting of licensed physical therapists, corrective exercise specialists, personal trainers, and functional health coaches work together holistically to help our clients completely virtually move away from chronic and recurring pains and injuries and allow them to get control over their own functional health so that they can progress and achieve their health and fitness goals and maintain it for life. So we're trying to bridge the gap between standard physical therapy and rehabilitative practices and treatments and fitness and merge the two so that we can live the abundant and active lives that we want and have the health that we want while doing so. So in today's video, we are going to break down one of our favorite exercises specifically for power and or endurance, depending on how you're doing it the kettlebell swing. It is a glorious exercise that is phenomenal for the posterior chain, which is like the most important part of our body to strengthen because the posterior chain, aka all of the muscles behind us, is where most of our muscle tissue lies. It's actually like where two thirds of our muscle tissue lies. And it's our power generating um, area. It's what allows us to run faster, or jump further, or for us to be able to stabilize the back correctly. And for us to be able to bend over and pick things up the right way without throwing out our, our or without tweaking our knees or throwing out our back or tweaking our neck or et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important. And for not all of our clients, like some of our clients are, are just trying to be able to keep up with the kids and to be able to get in some good workouts and aren't necessarily trying to get into sports or, or crazy power development. So that like this isn't this exercise isn't for everybody, but for many of our clients that want to run, that want to train for their next 5, 10K marathon, et cetera, or, or, or ultra marathon runners, or especially our athletes that need to have some power or quickness, um, that want to be a little bit more dynamic, the kettlebell swing it, it like is second to none in terms of how, uh, in terms of exercises to choose from. So this is a very big movement that we do with our clients late, like normally as they're working with us later in their program. We want to build up the foundation so they can do this correctly, um, but that's what I want to break down right now. So there's two versions of the kettlebell swing. One version is amazing. It's the version that like the, old, the, the OGs like Pavlov taught us how to do. It's called the hip hinge swing. The other version is the squat swing. That is the bad version of the swing. Um, and a lot of times in uh, cr like CrossFit or boot camp style classes, we will get into swings and we do it in the squat position. So meaning we, I, and I'm not even going to grab my weight right now because I, I don't, I don't need the strain on my back, but it's meaning we're going to go in and out of a squat as we do this swing, as opposed to a hip hinge, meaning I'm getting the movement from my hips moving back toward my heels and then driving up through the glutes. The squat version, even though squats are great for us, the squat version of the swing is really dangerous, especially for the lower back. And the reason for it is because of the how the force works. We all heard of centrifugal force when we were in school. The how the force is going in the arc of a swing is at any point during this swing, the weight is moving uh, is pulling me directly uh, directly away from my shoulders. So in a squat position, in general, like if we're doing a good workout, if we have, whether it's loaded on our back or we're holding it at our shoulders or we're holding it down below or whatever, if we're doing a squat, the force is straight down on our body. And so that's what the, how the back is designed to stabilize that position and, and uh, use the glutes and the core properly. But in a kettlebell swing, when our arms get out in front of us, like it's obviously for a brief second, but during that dynamic portion where I'm squatting and my arms are here, right now, the weight isn't pulling me straight down. It's pulling me forward. This, it, the, the weight is actually tr giving me the forward trajectory. And so I don't do what I just did where I fall forward and get off balance. What my back has to do is strain and engage to fight that motion that's trying to yank me this way. So my back is in a very compromised position. It can't, it, it doesn't get great leverage from the glutes and the core in that particular position. Versus when I do a hip hinge and I'm in more of a straight leg deadlift position, 
and I'm coming into my swing. Right now, my glutes and my hamstrings are taut. They're, they're loaded up. And as I come up, my glutes are engaging, engaging, engaging. And even though this weight is pulling me forward right now, as I'm coming up, I'm getting even better contraction, better stabilization from my glutes because I'm extending the hips. They're, fi they're shortening up. They're getting stronger and stronger as I get more and more vertical. So my back is being stabilized by my big, powerful glute muscle. So when we do a kettlebell swing, the name of the game is hip hinge. And how we can technically do this properly is we can set up our kettlebell, whatever we're trying to pick, and we're gonna have our feet nice and hip width apart. We're gonna have a good space of probably a couple of feet so I can get a little bit of a, a prep swing to prime the, pump so, prime the pump, so to speak. And I want my back nice and fat, flat. I can have soft knees. I'm just not going into a deep squat. So I can have soft knees here. I'm gonna swing the kettlebell back and then I'm engaging the glutes as I am standing up and just stopping this kettlebell at shoulder height and then letting it carry me back down and use those glutes to drive me back up again. The other things that I'm focusing on beyond just this glute squeeze to stand me up is, are my shoulders. I need the shoulders to be engaged so that at no point this kettlebell allows me to protract. Because if I protract, one, there's a very good chance that I'm going to put a lot of strain on my neck. I hate seeing in boot camp and CrossFit classes when people are here as they're doing their swings or here as they're doing their swings. You got to keep shoulders back, neck neutral as we do it. So big chest the whole time. And it almost helps when we get to the top to almost think about pinching the shoulders back even more so, like re-engaging these lats and mid rhomboids, uh, mid uh, traps and rhomboids to stabilize us before we get back into that hip hinge swing there. Now that's a neutral stance swing. We can do, there's a million different variations of swings though. We can do a, a, a what's called a skier swing where we have like two dumbbells or two kettlebells on either side. And we're going in and out of a narrow stance swing. We can do a single leg swing where we have a staggered stance and we're going in and out of either single arm or double arm swings. Uh, we can play around with uh, progressions in terms of obviously weight where we're going heavyweight and only doing like five to 10 explosive reps. That's really gonna translate to how uh, powerful we are on our explosive movements like jumping and sprinting, or we could get, pick a lighter weight that allows us to bust out 15, 30, 50 reps. 50 is kind of high, but I mean, we could get up there where we're going to get very cardiovascular. Like it's going to shoot your heart rate up and that's going to translate more to like power endurance. So if we're out running and we hit a hill and we need those glutes and hamstrings to take over to power us up, but we need the cardio, the endurance to be able to put in that extra um, enter that extra output, we're developing that lung capacity with this amazing exercise. So it's one of our favorites. Like I said, it's something that we build more of our athletes or weekend warriors to as they're working through the re rehabilitative program and progressing into their stabilization exercises. And now as we're getting into more functional fitness, that this is one of our favorites. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any questions uh, or if you want us to break down any other exercise, or you guys have any uh, um, ideas for other topics. We're always looking for input. Feel free to like, subscribe, follow us on whatever, whether you're checking this out on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Um, or, we're happy to put out uh, uh, more content every week and uh, feel free to check out our newsletter as well that we uh, are sending out each week as well for uh, new topics on uh, functional health from nutrition to mobility and of course, functional exercise. Talk to you soon.